Hey guys, it's Mary and it is Saturday night, so that means it's time for a video tutorial on Facebook. Let me just check off to the left, be sure we're transmittalating. And I guess I gotta refresh. There we go. Ah, oh, I see, I see movement, I see movement, that means we have video. Yay, here we go. And I'm the only one watching right there. We'll get us some folks here in just one second. All right, so if, if you're joining me, I appreciate you spending part of your Saturday with me. Let me be sure I'm in the right spot. Yes, I am. Hey. Hi, Mary. Hey, Barbara. Hi, Robbie. Hi, Karen. Hi, Kay. Hi, Marianne. Thank you for joining. I appreciate you. Hey, Sue. And Sue. <laughs> Thank you. And hello, Jennifer. Hi, Patricia. All right, so we got everybody joining. I want to let you know we have a guest in the studio today. My friend Jan is here, and she is one of the newest members of my um, Critters and Create and Crew Stampin' team. So that is kind of fun. She's going to be watching, and she was interested in this watercolor technique today. So, so that is kind of fun. Hey, Linda. Hi, Susan. Appreciate you joining. Hi, Holly. It's hot out there. Oh, Donna. I envy you every single time being where you can see Mount Rainier. That's my place. I'm going there one day, and I'm going to live there one day. I am. I really am. Hey, Julie. Appreciate you all joining. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we don't have a very difficult card today, but it takes a minute because there's a lot of watercoloring, and, and that takes a minute. So this is the card that I gave you the sneak peek of this morning. And for those of you who've been around a minute, you will recognize a returning favorite, the Gather Together Bundle. Uh, is in the new August to December catalog. But here is a fun fact that I actually just discovered today when I was looking it up. The Usually when a returning stamp set and die comes back, even if it was a bundle previously, when it returns in a catalog, it's not giving the bundled price. But in the new catalog coming out on the 4th of August, you will be able to get the 10% off price on this bundle. So if you don't already have it and and or got rid of it when it went away at the end of the uh, last holiday catalog, then you'll be able to get it again with your 10% off. Hey, Donna, I am safe and well. Thank you so much for asking. I hope the same for you. Hi, Serene. Hi, Kathy. Appreciate you. Thank you, Kathy. This card is so smack in my wheelhouse, it might as well have been made for me. Oh, wait, <laughs> I did make it. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I saw a really cool technique um, out on Beth's Paper Cuts, her website, um, and I will cite that tomorrow on my blog. But she made a beautiful pile of leaves. She used a new stamp set called Loyal Leaves, which I do not have yet. I will. But I thought when I saw it that the Gather Together um, stamp set would do well, and one of my favorite images ever, this gorgeous oak leaf. So let's get started. I've done a little bit of pre-cutting for you, not a lot, but some. We're going to start with our watercolor section. What I have here is just a basic piece of the new Fluid 100. It's not even new now, it's like a catalog or two old. Fluid 100 uh, watercolor paper. And I have made some sticky note masks. So here is my big tip for you guys today. When you make a sticky note mask, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to stamp it on a um, sticky note, which is why it's called a sticky note mask. There's a sticky part at the top of the sticky note mask, and if you can make sure that as much of your... Oh, Siri's talking. There you go. Um, don't know why that happened. So anyway, if you can stamp your image near the top of your sticky note so that at least part of your mask has sticky on it, it will work better. Tip number two, once you've made some of these and fussy cut them, keep them, just stick them inside your stamp case so that when you want to make another card with masking of these beautiful leaves, you've already got it made and you don't have to repeat that fussy cutting. Okay, there it is. That's the tip. Wasn't that amazing? Okay, so we are going to do watercoloring today and that means we want to use stays on ink. Here's my little tip. I'm just full of them tonight. I am so full of it tonight and tips. <laughs> um, when you are going to color with Stampin' Blends, do not use stays on ink. Use one of the classic inks. But if you're going to watercolor, stays on is the perfect choice. All right. So we're going to use stays on in Saddle Brown. And all I'm going to do is start stamping leaves. 
and I'm going to stamp like so. And then I'm going to cover that with my mask, one of my masks. That's why I made a bunch of masks, so that I can make a stack of leaves, okay? Yes, if you use the full, oh, full stick sticky note. I didn't even know that was a thing, Mary. That is really, I need to get me some full stick sticky notes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stamp over that initial image, like so. And you can see there's sometimes a little gap. It's not gonna matter by the time we get done, I promise, okay? So then I'll stamp, I'm gonna put another mask on. That's why I made a few, like this. And then we're just gonna kind of repeat that. And I'm gonna change the direction of the, st of the stamp so that my leaves look like they have fallen, right? We wanna look like it has, they've fallen on the ground. Okay. And then we'll put one, let's see, let's put another mask on here. And we're just gonna go for a little while until I get tired of doing it. And then we're going to take everything up and we're going to color them, okay? You can see there's kind of a gap there. I promise it's not gonna matter because when we get done with everything, first off, I'm gonna cut it so I can make that part just kind of go away. And second, when we get the watercoloring done, super sticky post-it. That's a great idea. I'm going to have to do that. Amy, you are not even sort of on time, man. Come on. What in the world? What in the world? Don't you have a watch or something? No, I'm kidding. I'm glad you're on, kid. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you're a busy, busy woman. You is a busy woman. All right, so we're just making some stickies going down the page here. If I can figure out how that leaf went. How did that leaf go? There we go. It gets a little confusing. I'm really going to have to get the Loyal Leaves stamp set because those leaves are a little smaller, so they'll take a little less time to color. And also, they have really lots of um, shade lines in them, and so that's, that's kind of cool. There we go. Let's put that there. I think we'll go ahead and stamp. Uh, better cover that one up. So you can see what I'm doing, right? I'm just moving down the page, moving my sticky notes, and getting big globs of stays on ink, because that's always fun. I probably can get that somewhere on something that I didn't mean to get it on. Hope you've had a good weekend. We bathed the dog today. Oh my gosh, he was so excited and happy to have that happen to him. By which I mean not at all excited and happy to have that happen to him. But he got over it because he's that kind of guy. He is that kind of guy. All right, if you guys are leaving comments, I'm not seeing them because I'm carefully concentrating on my stack of leaves. Here, my stack of leaves. Well, thank you, Chris. and. Patricia, I appreciate that. Hi, Diana. Appreciate you joining. See, I'm trying to keep up with comments. Okay. Now, this is the die I'm going to cut with, so I'm going to see how I'm doing. And I kind of like that. I like a little bit of white space left, so I'm going to stop the madness here and clean off my ink my ink pad. This is not my ink pad. I'm not cleaning my ink pad. That's just a, that's like, that isn't even a thing. Okay, here we go. And closing that. And we'll get rid of this. Okay, now here comes the watercolor technique. Now I'm just going to tell you straight up, I did not do mine nearly as well as Beth did hers, but this is who you get to watch. So I am using four colors to color, and I've started. I'm starting with crushed curry. Then I'm going to go to pumpkin pie, Cajun craze, and Mary Mul or no, cherry cobbler will be my last one. So I'm kind of starting with the lightest at, on the leaves that are towards the top of the pile, as best I can tell, and then going down from there. So I'm going to take one of my little tiny ink uh, blocks and dab it on my ink pad like that to get some ink on it. And then I'm using the one of the new water painters. Now I'm gonna give you a tip, okay? You know how you've heard all of your life, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty? 
don't try that because it doesn't work. You can lefty loosey this all day long and it won't work. It will not unscrew because it's righty loosey lefty tidy <laughs> on these. Okay, so when you are wanting to open the water painter to put water in it and make it a, you know, water painter, you got to go opposite what your brain tells you to do. Okay? And I promise it will take you seconds. So you might as well just, um, you know, just do opposite what you think. When you can't open it because you're trying to turn it, go the other way. You'll be fine. But anyway, this comes with three painters, and they are different size. You can see the very large brush. You can see a very small pointy brush. And then you can see the middle brush, which is also pointy. So you get two pointies and one not pointy. Oh, there, that should show it way better. All right, you get that whole pack of three when you buy them. So that's kind of cool. Different from our older set. All right, so let me put this away. Yeah. I'm not sure why it does that. I don't know. Let me put this away like so. I'll put this away later because it's going to take me a second. Okay. Uh, the chamois. The chamois, I saw you were having problems with the chamois. If you look them up, in fact, um, I'll have my assistant pull up the, look in the bottom drawer of that little dresser right behind there, and you, you should see the bottle with the chamois in it. And we'll get it, and I'll show you what kind it is. So in order to color, we're just going to squeeze a little bit and put a little bit of water. No, not the, not the, the dresser. Right here. Oh, right here. Yeah. Um, just get a little bit of water on the block and pick up some ink. And I'm going to say this is a top. And I know it because I just put it on there. And we're just going to color. All right. And I, I don't like to use a lot of water, but you want some. If you're real good at watercoloring, which I'm really not, it's kind of like not my thing. But I like this technique so much I had to do it. So you might want a little more water than I'm using right there. And Jane, if you see any questions, would you let me know? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. You'll be glad to know I've done quite a bit of the other work so that once this is done, otherwise we'd be here until like, you know, the 12th of next week. The 12th is not next week. I don't know when the 12th is, but it is not next week. But, you know what is coming up pretty quick, you guys, is the end of bonus days. And you really want to get those, um, you want to get your orders in so that you can earn those, those bonus days coupons. And if you have forgotten what bonus days is, when you spend $50 before shipping and tax, then you'll get a $5 coupon to spend the third through the the 3rd through the, um, well, actually the 4th of August through the end of August. You'll get a $5 coupon for every $50 you spend. Jerry, this is the watercolor paper. It's the Fluid 100, the Stampin' Up! Fluid 100 paper. And it's, it's a really good choice. But I will tell you, this is a thing to know. The color of this paper is neither white nor very vanilla. Okay, so when I used it on here and left this white space, then in, in Mary's brain, that said that my sentiment wanted to be on the watercolor paper as well. Okay, when I went to the inside, though, as you'll see in a minute, I did go to very vanilla. So is it dramatically different? Kind of, right? So you can see that difference there, yes? All right. The whammy on Stampin' Up. Oh, that's the chamois, yes. I recommend, this is, let me just do an aside. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's called the Absorber, and I got the Absorber XL. I got it on Amazon. It's ginormously huge, and I just cut it into usable pieces, okay? So I have two of these that I keep in a Tupperware on my desk. I just let them dry out between uses and then I warm them. I just run them in warm water. Seems to work quicker for me. And this one has just been sitting in its tube for three years now. And if I decided I needed some more or wanted to give some to somebody, I would just cut a piece off. So the Absorber XL. There you go. All right. So back to our coloring. This one is done. I'm going to do another one in crushed curry. Here, get a little more ink. And I think this one looks like it's near the top of the pile. 
with the stays on, you really don't have to worry much about it running, so you can kind of get jiggy with it. But, you know, when you get to the edges, you probably want to slow down a little bit and get a little less jiggy so that you don't go outside the lines, because God knows we don't want to go outside the lines. Don't go outside the lines. All right. Now, you could do any color combination that you like, but I really like, you know, I mean, crushed curry and <clears throat> Cajun craze, they're pretty good color combos for the fall, right? And aren't we all, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I am ready for some fall. It is hotter than a mo, oh, oh, here. Okay, let's see. I'm going to stop with the crushed curry for just a second. I might come back to it, but I'm going to go on with some uh, pumpkin pie. And I'm just going to wipe off my block and dab, dab, dab it again. So really all I'm doing is making myself some little color palettes, little palettes, little palettes. And I'm going to put a little water in there. Okay. And this one looks like it could be next on the, on the pile. Y'all are panicking. You're like, oh my God, she's going to color all those leaves. We're going to be here until Tuesday. No, I promise. I'll be, I'll be done quicker than that because I'm going to get a little bit faster and a little bit better and a little bit strong. No, that's, that's Lee Majors. Sorry. Anybody who doesn't know Lee Majors, you're too young. It's the $6 million man, the bionic man. They made him better, faster, stronger. Come on. And every time he ran, he went... It was a little different than that. He doesn't look the same. I'm just saying. He's aged differently than all that. Yeah. Just throwing it out there. All right. So that's kind of a light one. I'm going to give that a little more ink right there. Because I, I think that needs to be a little more... A little less mango and a little more pumpkin. You see why I don't watercolor much? I'm really not very good at it. I... It's just not my thing. And then there was the bionic woman. Yes, but she she got totally gypped. I mean, really? He had he had like a laser f weapons finder thing. Six dollar man? Yes. <laughs> he, I'm not even... Well, I don't want to say that because Lee Majors could be one of my followers. I don't know. But I would say six dollars is about right. But see, the bionic woman got gypped. He got the eye with the with the weapons finder, and she got just an ear. I mean, come on. Who needs super hearing? I I want the eyeball with the, you know, kill, kill, like he had. Okay, we're going to do another one. But you know what? What does that tell us, ladies? It's a man's world. It's a man's world. Let's see, I'm having trouble seeing this leaf. We're going to say it's right here. That's really the problem, is that the leaves are a little harder to see than, you know, you might like. But, you know, who's going to know? If you don't know where the leaf is, how is anybody else going to know where the leaf is? That's what I'm saying. All right. I'm going to have to have Jan come over all the time for these because it's kind of nice to have somebody who says, Mary, there's a, there's a question. <laughs> Somebody's saying something really funny. Usually that Amy person, Amy, Amy the troublemaker. Amy claims I'm a troublemaker on her videos, and I think she doesn't know what troublemaker is. She needs to look in the troublemaker mirror. One might ask why I'm not putting more color on my block. The answer is, I don't know. You need that laser. I don't know. Do you know that song? Let's see. I want to see you guys sing on the comments. I do. I, I want to see it. So remember with any kind of color, you can put it on. It's really hard to take it off. So start a little lighter and then add in color. Just saying. Otherwise, you may end up with more color than you think you want. And then it's going to look really funny. Amy Kunders, you are a troublemaker and you know it. From day one, you've been a troublemaker. And also, 
I think you're a bad influence on me because until I met you, I was so not a troublemaker. Jan's known me a long time. She knows I am not a troublemaker. There are a lot of things I am, but troublemaker is not it. Yeah, right, Amy. Amy, Amy, Amy. Okay, I have switched, in case you didn't catch that swift switch, I have switched over to some um, Cajun craze. And that's really dark, but I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it because I'm that, I am that bold. I am just that bold. I'm telling you guys right now, just get the Loyal Leaves stamp set when it comes out because this technique looks even better with it than it does. I mean, it looks good with this leaf, but those Loyal Leaves are really cool. Wake up. You don't believe it? What? I know, Jolene. I watched them every time they were on. I loved it. it. Well, he was kind of my hero. Well, no. The truth of the matter is my real hero was Captain Kirk. I'm not going to lie. I used to have these dreams, these hopes and wishes that Captain Kirk would beam into my bedroom and just take me away to boldly go where no teenage girl had gone before, but he never did. I don't know why. Did you know that William Shatner, you see how quickly I made that transition? William Shatner raises and shows American saddlebred horses. It's not even, I'm not even lying. I saw him at the World Championship Horse Show in Kentucky back a few years back. All right. There's a Cajun craze, and I think we're going to make that a Cajun craze. I like Cajun craze, so this one's going to be Cajun craze. You guys bored yet? Bored, 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 bored. See, if I was a good demonstrator... I'd probably colored half of these before you ever got here, but then you wouldn't have seen the incredible stamping prowess of me stamping all these leaves and so expertly coloring them with my water painters. I like these new water painters, I'm not going to lie. Even though they do unscrew backwards, I don't know why. Why would you make them, why would you go against lefty loosey righty tighty? I mean, my goodness. Every child knows that. American Pickers decorated Williams out. They did? That's cool. Did they do a good job or did they? was it bad? William Shatner, that's a dude I'd like to meet. My brother has met him. He sold him a McLaren car. Actually, he didn't sell it. They were doing a commercial with William Shatner and McLarens. Or no, maybe it was Aston's. It was Aston Martin's when he was doing Aston Martin's. And they went up to these rock formations in Southern California where they actually filmed some of the Star Trek stuff. It's Star Trek, Amy, just so you know. It's Star Trek, not Star Wars. I know you're confused by that. Um, and he met him, and I was like, dude, seriously? You met William Shatner, and I don't have an autograph or nothing? Nothing? Really? Your sister, the Trekkie, you didn't even get his autograph. I am a little bit hurt by that, not going to lie. All right, so let's see. I think this looks like it was leaf and I didn't get it, so I'm going to put it in there like that. Is she being mean again? How about Adam on Bonanza? He can... Oh, yeah. Well, you know. Oh, so you don't accidentally unscrew them. Uh, okay. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. I mean, that's as good, an, as good a reason as anything. I'm watching you on both my desktop and my smartphone. Uh, yeah, I don't know why, but thank you. And the colors are more vivid. Hmm. Maybe it's, have you got like a really new, a really new phone, maybe? All right, and then I think we're going to do one more in Cajun Craze, and it's going to be this one right here. This one right here. And then we're going to finish out with our Cherry Cobbler. And we'll be ready to do a couple of little quick die cuts and start putting it together. <laughs> Adam had an attitude. <laughs> so you wanted the, the good boys, and some folks wanted the bad boys. <laughs> oh, Lenny, you're just you're just kind of biased, kid. You're biased. 
All right, here we go. I'm almost done, you guys. I mean it. I know I said that like seven leaves ago, but this time I mean it. I'm really almost done. No, I'm not. We're not even close. We're not even like halfway through. This one's starting to look kind of rough. I gotta fix it. I need to stop yakking and fix it. Hmm? Fillets, king crab, and a spare. Oh man, yum! That's just mean, Karen. Dang. We had smoked brisket, which was good, but it's no king crab fillets and the spare. Dang. I'll be there in like nine hours. Save one. All right, so I'm gonna be done with that. And then I'm going to finish out with some cherry cobbler. And I think I better close a few ink pads before I have an inking accident. Not that that has ever happened, ever. So does. Clean off my water brush by squirting a little water on my paper towel. And then we'll finish with this. Bonanza leprechaun. So... Not sure who asked. William Shatner and James Spade are Boston legal. Yeah, but he was... <sighs> My William Shatner is Captain Kirk. See, he is the dude. The man. He's the man. He's a man's man. He is the captain of captains. Which is why Jean-Luc was just not the right dude, man. He's just not okay. But Captain Kirk... When, when Captain Kirk came on the bridge, you knew it was all going to be okay. It didn't matter. Surrounded by Klingons, no worries. He's going to execute the Corbomite maneuver, even though, and he's going to use the wrong code, the code that's been broken, and he knows it's been broken, and they're going to hear it, and they're going to back off. You don't need to worry. Captain Kirk is the man. Jean-Luc, on the other hand, had to have a number one to do his bidding. To do his dirty work. Number one, make it so. What? You can't do it yourself, dude. The science officer is right there. Just tell him. <sighs> no. Sean Luke, no. He is not the right captain of the Enterprise. Sean Luke was cl classy? Yeah, but. Yeah, but no. It was. I'm sorry, I, I'm a Kirkite all the way. There's, there is but one captain. Captain, my Captain Kirk. Okay. I assume there must be something wrong with me because I like Spock best. Well, you are welcome to like Spock, but he was not the captain. See, I, I'm, a, I'm a leadership kind of girl. I like the, the, la the, the guys in the gold shirts, okay? I did. I like the gold, guys in the gold shirts. The truth of the matter is, my actual favorite character was McCoy. I always liked the Doc. But when my friend and I were playing Star Trek, yes, we did. I was always Captain Kirk. Well, sometimes I had to let her be Captain Kirk, but then I was Bones. I don't think any of us were ever Spock because, you know, really only Sheldon can be Spock. See, now that is what we call mixing our, our <laughs> TV dramas. Okay, so we've got our cherry cobbler about laid in here. Which means whew, almost done with this part. This is the time-consuming part. You'll be glad to know I've already pre-watercolored the other leaf on the card. Okay. Now, I do think I've missed an entire leaf area, a lethal area, an entire lethal area. And so I'm going to arbitrarily determine that that's Cajun craze, which I really think it is. And we're gonna color that in right quick. So just so you know, if you don't wanna use the ink, the block to get your ink, you can actually squeeze onto the top of your ink pad and pick up ink just like that as well. So many ways to get ink on your water painter. There we go. And I've just, just now arbitrarily decided that this is also leaf. There we go. Okay. Okay. Hard to tell it Caden Crane. Yes, it is hard on your screen, but I can assure you, you can see it here. But you know what? Really, it's the difference in the same way that fall leaves are different than each other. They have a different color tone, but you know, really they're kind of fall leaves, right? Okay. 
let's put that away. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to cut mm -hmm, right after I find the second die cut thing. Here it is. And I'm going to do this off screen so I don't shake, shake, shake our table. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two rectangles at the same time. This is from the stitched rectangles dies. And I want to leave a little bit of white space, okay? And then I'm just going to center this in the middle and I'm going to run them through at the same time. I will be right back. I mean, I'm not really going anywhere so much as I am going off screen. I'm going to just cut this. I don't know about you guys, I'm excited because next week I get to pre-order the brand new die cutting and embossing machine. And I am very excited to get my hands on it. Just one of the perks of being a demonstrator. Just throwing that out there right now. So if you guys are interested, you could sign up right now and then you would be all ready to pre-order with us next week and get your mitt on it too. All right, so here's what we came up with. And that's going to leave us with a small piece and a less small piece. The less small piece has a hole in it. Okay, now on the sample card, I used a piece of Cajun Craze DSP from the Regals DSP. On this one, I thought I would change up the color scheme just a little bit, and so I'm going with Pumpkin Pie as my mat, still using an early espresso card base like this, okay? So I'm gonna start layering these up with liquid glue. You're just gonna keep your big shot? Well, I was thinking that, but I don't know. It's just, I, I'm intrigued and I need, I need to see how it's gonna be. Sorry, gonna need to see it. Also, my big shot is starting to loosen up a little on the inside. And so, okay, it's really not. I'm just making that up because I want to get the new one. See, I don't know why I managed, worked on turning that around because I didn't need to. So I'm just centering it in my little mat doohickey. Okay, now here's my mea culpa. I have really got to take this <laughs> roll of burlap ribbon out of my shelf, which is why it's good that I'm almost out of it. I keep forgetting that this little booger is retired, and I'm sorry, but hopefully you've still got some in your stash somewhere because it's the very bestest of the best. I'm just cutting a length of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some Stampin' Seal Plus and I'm gonna run a little bit of it on there. A little bit of it on there, like that. And then I'm going to adhere my trim to it. Like so, just like so. Exactly like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to lay it on my card base so that I can lay out all of my pieces and parts, okay? Next up, I'm going to put some Stampin' Dimensionals on my little cutout piece and stick it back in place. Some of my half dimensionals here. Now this is a really good spot. Remember we've talked about sometimes I put the dimensionals on the card instead of on the die cut. And this is a real good spot to do that because that way I make sure that I don't, I'm really not putting a dimensional on the ribbon because that's going to screw up the, the layering. And it works good with something as straightforward as a rectangle. And there's really no such thing as too many dimensionals as you are aware. So we're going to put these on like this. And then we're just going to stick it. We're going to stick it. My birthday gift to me. There you go. You see what I'm saying? Hey, Angie. Appreciate you coming on. I didn't see you earlier. Yeah, I'm excited. And I was thinking as I, as I watched the videos, I was thinking how many times I stuck my big old clunky big shot in a suitcase and then tried to pack stuff around it and all I, what I would have given for legs that fold up. Did I drink a lot of coffee today? 
Um, I did drink a little, but when Jan and her husband came over, they brought a beer from a local brewery that doesn't even taste like beer. It tasted like like a limeade, but not as sweet, more like a bitter limeade. And either it's really, really stout, or I just don't drink very much, or some combination thereof. But it kind of hit me sideways, I'm just not going to lie. But you know me, I'm just always such a perky person anyway. Perky is my middle name. Okay. Now, the only trick here is making sure you line the, the design back up, because it will look... See how funny it would look? That would just be wrong. That would not be good. So you want to do it right. And then you just kind of eyeball it and put it right smack back in the middle of... Wah! His neck so gorgeous. Okay, before you joined, I cut out a few pieces and parts. I stamped the uh, large leaf again on another piece of watercolor paper in Saddle Brown Stays on Ink. And I, dye co I colored it with the aqua painter, or sorry, the water painter in Pumpkin Pie. My sample, just so you know, my sample was Cajun Craze. Okay, so it was the same as my mat. And I've kind of kept that convention going. And I also used the three cool leaves. You guys remember these leaves from the Gathered Leaves die set? These three right here? These emboss and cut at the same time. So I cut two out of crushed curry and the small one out of cherry cobbler. And the trick with these, of course, it's helpful if you can, is to spritz your cardstock before you roll it through your cutting machine with a little bit of water, and then it really gets a nice deep <clears throat> emboss as it cuts. And then as soon as I pulled them out, I gave them a little bit of a curl so that they would look more like leaves and less like die cut cardstock. I did the same with my large one, okay? And I also somewhere on this table, I have cut a small stitched rectangle of um, the watercolor paper, and that is going to be for my sentiment, which I'm going to stamp. I know, Julie, right? Such a great, I was so happy to see this back. All right, so I'm going to stamp Gather Together, and I'm um, cheating it to the right side of my sentiment label, okay? So, cheating it to the right side of my sentiment label, and I'm holding it a beat. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three and a half, one thousands. Okay, that's pretty good. I don't love it, so I'm going to fix it. What's my, what's my tip to everybody is always have the Stampin' Right marker for all of your colors so that you can fix little errors like that. <clears throat> Hang on, i got to get a drink. My throat is dry. I blame the beer. Okay. Phew. I'll put this away. Spritz my leave with what stamp and die set. Oh, this is the, Susan, this is the Gather Together bundle. It's a bundle again. It's returning. This was in the last holiday catalog. And now it is back. And unlike normal times when these return, usually when when stamps and dies carry over, the bundle price does not. But in this case, in the August to December catalog, you can still buy this as a bundle and get a 10% savings. Yay! Okay, and here's the last piece of the puzzle. Remember Mr. Moose? Ah, the moose punch is back, people. And I don't know why I thought a moose would be good on here, but I really did, and I really liked it when I got it there. So, so there's a moose on here. And I cut him from early espresso, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to layer this up. And when I'm doing these collages, remember one of the things I like to do is to have stuff go off the edges of the mat. So I wanna lay it on my card base so that I can see where off the edge is without going off the edge of the card base. So I'm going to do a quick layout here of my leaves and my sentiment like this. I think we'll do that. And then we're going to well, we'll put this big one underneath there like that. And then Mr. Moose is going to go here. He's going to have him a, so it's going to look just like that. That's awesome. Remember, I would take a picture of it if I wasn't using my phone for my video. 
So I'm just gonna leave this right here like that. And I'm going to adhere these leaves with liquid glue. So the reason I would take a picture is so that when I took it apart, I'd be able to put it back together easy. And the same way I had it, in case I had spent, you know, 10, 15 minutes agonizing over where everything needed to go. In this case, not gonna lie, I'm just doing it the same as my sample. Uh, but when I did it to start with, I agonized. I did, I promise. I totally agonized. It was agonizing. It was agonizing. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna put a few dimensionals on the card base itself so that I can adhere my leaf, my big leaf. And by a few, of course, I mean way more than Amy would have used. Leaf this here. <laughs> I know, Julie, the, the moose coming back was so cool. There, that one's not cut. That's not been unthickied. It's not been thickied. All right, and then we'll put our leaf on here. All right, just a sec. <gasps> I'm way too young to remember that, Alicia. Come on. You know I'm barely 29. <laughs> barely. I mean, so, like, I am so barely 29. I barely even remember the Beatles. Uh, okay. So on this, I'm going to go ahead and put some Stampin' Dimensionals here. And I'm gonna end up with one there, I'm pretty certain. And then I'm gonna use a little liquid glue over here. And Mr. Green, you guys are old. Old, old, old. So I saw a funny thing today, my mom sent it to me and it was, um, it was actual questions asked on a GED exam to 16 year olds trying to get their high school uh, equivalency. And one of them was, what happens Hey, Eunice, appreciate you joining. One of them was, what happens to the human body when it gets old? And the answer was, um, your, when you get old, your bowels get old too, and you become intercontinental. <laughs> Which I just thought was really funny. There were some really funny ones in there. All right, I'm going to use a little liquid glue over here on the leaf so that I can adhere my sentiment like a sue. Now this one, I'm gonna go ahead and add a second dimensional because this dimensional right here wants to be doubled up because it's got a lot of thickness under it. So I'm just gonna add a second sentiment under there, or no, second dimensional under there with my handy twizzers. There we go. Perfect. It's perfect, I says. All right. Now, because it's a Mary card and we need it, we're going to do a double loop bow. Okay. Of course you were a toddler. Of course you were. All right. Double loop bows. Hold the uh, thread between your thumb and forefinger. And the, this really does work the best with linen thread. And you're going to loop four fingers four times. So there's one, two, three, four and then loop two fingers one two three and four and then hold snip take a hold of it and make your squeeze the two sides together and then do a figure eight like that take your handy tweezers which i know you all have now and squeeze it together like that Get another little short piece and tie it around there. And you guys, if you have trouble with this bow, just keep making them. I I promise the first one I ever did, <laughs> I was thumbs and fingers going every which way. So just keep working at it. You'll get it. It's thread. Not life altering, not earth shaking, not earth shattering, it's just thread. So make it do what you need it to do. 
Yes, we're all way too young to have ever even seen those shows. Mm -mm. Nope, we aren't. Just because we're all 29 plus expedited shipping and handling, that's not important right now. Oh, you guys, I'm taking way too long with this card. I'm so sorry. Okay, so now I'm just going to adhere this with a glue dot. I'll move along, I promise. With a glue dot right there. Like that. <laughs> All right, and let's see. Then I'm going to put Mr. Moose on here. Like that. So I'll just put a dimensional there. And a dimensional here, and that ought to be okay. Let me get him covered. Make sure he's going to cover there. He's not, so I'm going to pick that up. And I'm going to cut it in half. So just so you know, you can pick up a dimensional once you've stuck it down. Just saying. So if it isn't what you need, pick it up and fix it. I have been. I've been loving your pictures. I'm very envious. We we just don't actually have places to see that here. If we could find any place that didn't have all the light pollution, maybe we could. But even if I go out in my pasture, I can't see that far down on the horizon because of the trees around my place. So, so I have had to live vicariously through your pictures, dear. And I am envious. And those pictures are amazing. That was really cool. Really cool. All right, and there goes Mr. Moose, like so. Now, do you guys remember that you can color your rhinestones with your Stampin' Blends? So I'm gonna take my dark um, pumpkin pie. On my sample, I used the dark um, Cajun Craze. And I'm gonna color four little ones and one not so little, but not really big. It's the just right size. And we're going to stick these on around and about. Here and there, willy and nilly. Why do I have four? Well, because I've got a fifth one on my sentiment. And I want it to go odds, right? Okay, so there's one there. And then some days, especially if you're in a hurry, have you ever noticed that when you're in a hurry, nothing works, right? Is that just a thing or is that just me? All right, we'll stick that there. And then I'm gonna stick this larger one on the sentiment. Where did he go? Which way did he go? There he is. Come here. Okay. And then I think I will put this last one because I really like them, especially when they're colored. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. So pretty. There. And there is our card front. I'm going to go ahead and adhere that with liquid glue to the front of the card. And then we'll I'll show you what the inside's gonna do. It'll go pretty quick, I promise. It would help if I would stop yakking, huh? Everybody's like, God, shut up. Just shut up. Shut up. Okay, there we go. Okay. So that's the front. On the inside, I am going to... I'm ready for fall, too. I'm going to take my big leaf and I'm going to stamp it in early espresso ink because I am coloring with my Stampin' Blends. And remember me saying we are not going to color stays on with Stampin' Blends because it will run. So I'm just going to stamp this here like so. Turn the cardstock, stamp the top. And while I have that out, I'll stamp my very vanilla envelope front. And then hopefully I won't do 
like I did on my first one, which was get ink somewhere else and have to do a second image. So let's put this away, put it away. Before, two. I have to admit it before do two. I don't know what that means, Mary. Oh, you happen to love my yakking? <laughs> That's good. Because I can't seem to stop. I can't stop. Did I just sound like Captain Kirk right there? I did, huh? Just admit it. I sounded just like Captain Kirk right there. Okay. I am following my same theme on my sample card when I did the inside. I colored it with the light Cajun craze. On this card, because that's kind of the color theme. Cajun craze, Cajun craze. On this card, pumpkin pie, pumpkin pie, pumpkin pie. Okay. Light pumpkin pie. And I'm just using the Stampin' Blend. And I'm going to color quick. Quick, what's the answer? What ink are we never going to use when we use a Stampin' Blend? Quick. Anybody? Oh, gosh. You've forgotten already. No, it, the answer is not intercontinental. <laughs> I don't know if anybody said that, but I'm guessing somebody was thinking that. All right. We're going to just do a quick color here. And then I'm going to do... I'm just staying with that light blend. And kind of doing close to the veins. Yep, stays on. You all win! There's no prize. But you all win. Yay! Okay. And if you wanted to, you could actually use both blends and get some more going. But I think it actually... Actually, you know, you can get quite a bit of blending with just one of the, of the tones, right? Just go back over where you want it to be a little darker. Okay. Now I'm going to pull out my acetate. Remember my old acetate from my old, much-loved Stamp-a-Majig? And stick it in my envelope so I can protect the back. And the other thing I'm going to do, if you kind of remember my tip, is when I get to the edge, I'm doing this against the edge, not this. And that helps to keep it from bleeding to the back of your envelope, okay? It isn't always perfect, but, you know, at some point it's, it's, it's art, and you can just act like you meant for it to go back there. But you will minimize how much of that there is if you don't scrub the blend right up against the back of the edge of the card. Or the edge of the envelope, sorry. Do not approach the edge of the envelope. That is for test pilots only. I've actually seen that warning, just so you know. Okay, here we go. We'll just put a little blending in here. Not a lot. And then I'm going to show you one final little doohickey that I'm going to do. I'm taking my Crushed Curry Stampin' Write marker. And I'm just putting some little dots around various spots around the leaf. It's just a little bit of interest. Do you have to do this? No. But why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to? I mean, just, you know, why wouldn't you? Everybody wants to do little dots. Little dots are fun. Little dots are like all artsy and stuff. See, I do these little dots and I think to myself, my goodness, Mary, you are such an artiste. Whew. What an artiste you are, Mary. Mm-hmm. My friend is sitting here thinking, oh my lord, this woman has lost her mind. Ro oh, Trigger and buttermilk. Uh-huh. I saw Trigger's stuffed body, which is weird. But, I mean, really? You stuff your horse? I don't know. I don't know if that's weird or, or really, really cool. But I saw him. He was a cool horse. He was a cool... Buttermilk didn't get a lot of attention. Trigger, yeah, yeah, Trigger. Roy Rogers and Trigger and Dale Evans and Buttermilk. That was her horse's name, in case you didn't know. Just saying. Yes, these kinds of things that keep me up at night. What is Dale Evans' horse's name? <clears throat> that one I don't have to Google because I already know it. Oh, look at me using that. <laughs> okay, here we go, and we're just going to mat this on pumpkin pie. So remember on the front I matted on the pumpkin pie DSP, but on the inside 
I'm using a very vanilla panel and I'm just um, matting on regular pumpkin pie. What about Sky King? Uh oh. Okay, now who is Sky King? This one I'm, I'm maybe not knowing. I was thinking somebody would come up with Buck Rogers and weedy weedy weedy, but nobody has yet. So, my friend Flicka. No, no, I am not too young. Mm -mm, I remember Flicka. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I don't remember Captain Kangaroo, but I do remember Flicka. Yeah, that's the ticket. Mm -hmm. I got a little jiggy with my glue, so I'm just wiping it up with my damp chamois there before it dries. And that, my friends, is almost that. Let me put my DSP on my envelope flap. My envelope flap. And in keeping with the same pumpkin pie theme, I'm using pumpkin pie. And you can see I've used that wood. That wood. <clears throat> Hop along Cassidy. Mr. Ed. You know they used peanut butter to make him do that lip thing? That's what I read somewhere, is that they used peanut butter to make him move his lips. <clears throat> All they really needed was a halflinger and somebody off screen with a peppermint and they would have gotten that same exact reaction. Would have been a lot easier. Okay, so I just used a little liquid glue and put that on and now I'm going to do a quick fussy cut. <clears throat> a quick fussy cut. Hmm. Who is Sky King? Somebody tell me. What was Zora's horse's name? Hmm. I believe his name was... I don't know. I don't know what his name was. How could I not know? Mostly because I was so busy looking at Antonio Banderas. I did not care what Antonio's horse's name was. All right, you guys. I've kept you a long time. It is really almost 8 o'clock. I am so sorry. Let's see. I had two cards when I started this mess. Where's the envelope for the... Oh, here it's right in front of me. Goodness. Rancher with a Sky King, Rancher with a plane. He would whistle for him. Yeah. I whistle <clears throat> for my horses and they just look at me like, what? All right, guys, here we go. Two cards. Same. Oh, Zorro's name. It just came to me. His name is Tornado. It was Tornado. <laughs> Jan has to come over every time. <laughs> Okay, so here we go, the same card. One is with a pumpkin pie theme, and the other with Cajun craze. Which one do you like better? What do you guys think? I don't know, it's kind of a toss up. I like them both. We gotta vote? Let's see. Silver was in fact the Lone Ranger's horse, yes. Thank you, Karen, I appreciate you very much. All right, guys, thanks for spending so much time with me tonight. Mary likes the pumpkin pie better. <clears throat> I'm glad you had fun, everybody. All right. All right. I will see you guys. I'll be back on um, Thursday at 1 on my YouTube channel. I hope you'll take a look at my special bundles. They're still available, and there's still shares open. So take a look at both of those, and I'll see you on Thursday. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend and a great week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.